WIP Afternoon Show with Ike, Spike, and Fritz. Tiki in a little bit. Tiki has arrived. We'll have a Tiki Barber, the less hated barber in Philadelphia, for sure. Uh, right after. Yeah, he's definitely less. I didn't say not hated. Right now we have Brian Baldinger, who is our Odyssey NFL insider, host of the Odyssey original podcast, The Best Football Show, featuring daily breakdowns of all the most exciting moments across the league. Hello, Baldy. How are you, sir? Spike. Ike, how's that? Uh, how's that house cleaning up, Ike? You got everything under control right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting there, Baldy. It's, it's taking a little longer than I thought it was going to take, but yeah, it's getting yeah. there. It, it, it goes like that sometimes. <laughs> yep. So, Eagles had what was largely viewed across the country, at least in media circles, as one of the best drafts uh, in the NFL. Curious, just top level, what you thought, and if you sort of agreed with that assessment. Well, I mean, the biggest need was corner. I mean, they were the worst, second worst pass defense in all of football last year, giving up 35 touchdowns, uh, and not just giving up you know big plays in the passing game, but they they were horrible tacklers too. It's a bad combination, Spike. So to get two of the top five corners in this draft, I mean, they you know, not only did they draft good players, but they they hit their biggest needs, mm-hmm. and so that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the best player isn't your biggest need, and you still draft them. This was their biggest need. And they got two really good players. So, um, as far as Jalen Hunt, um, I, I used to just sort of process, like, just text, you know, general managers randomly. Hey, give me five guys nobody's talking about. Let me go take a look at them. And when they said, you know, Jalen Hunt, Houston Christian, I said, I hope I have some film from Houston Christian. I don't think I've ever watched a game of theirs before. So, I found them, though. I saw, you know, I, I watched them and studied them a little bit, gave a little report. But, you know, like they got they got good players. I mean, they needed defense. And they got defensive help. Mm-hmm. I look at the cornerback position, Baldy. Uh, you were one that was early on Cooper Jagene and, and very high on him. We wound up getting the top rated corner as well in Quinion Mitchell. Um, how do you see these young guys sort of contributing this year? And, and how do you see Cooper sort of being used uh, early on? Well, I mean, I think his. You know, I think when he lines up at minicamp, he's going to line up at corner. You know, I think that's what he was at Iowa. He was a cornerback. I think that's what he's going to be. Now, is there certain packages, Ike, where he could play down low in the box? Could he play in the slot? Could he, you know, be a deep half-field safety? I mean, I guess all those things are possible. But, you know, when you watch him at Iowa the last two years, I mean, he was primarily an outside corner. And that's – you know, and he was a very good tackler and all those kind of things. He had good ball skills. You know, he was a returner, did all these other things. But I think, you know, his base position is going to be corner. And if he can morph into other positions depending on situations, that, that might that might happen. But you generally want to learn one position and get it down, get the calls, uh, get the checks. Uh, mm-hmm. You'll learn how to play that position within Vic Fangio's defense. Yeah, and to the Eagles' credit, um, they pretty much have listed him as a cornerback. They haven't really talked about the other stuff, although they've been asked about it. But they, they've they raved about his ability uh, to play that cornerback position. I just think a lot of people just automatically assume that he can't play on the outside and he's going to be a safety. You're saying, no, this kid's going to be a corner. Yeah, I mean, I look, they're, they're only saying that because he's, you know, his complexion, that's all. I mean, they haven't really studied and watched him. You watch him in the Big Ten – Go up against the, the the best players. I mean, he was a you know in, in college you've got a, a boundary corner, you got a field corner. You watch him play the field. I mean, you're covering a lot of space out there. Yep. And he didn't look like he had a lot of problem doing that, Ike. And so, uh, you know, I mean, it's look. Are they going to play a lot of press man coverage? I mean, if if it was up to Darius Slay, that's all they would play. But that's not what any team does. Every team plays a variety of coverages depending on down distance situation who you're playing against. So you got to be pretty flexible, but mm-hmm. yeah, he's he's proven that. Look, I mean, I, he went number forty. It was probably a lot lower than most people expected. Um, and the Eagles had, you know, they had their first pick of whatever corner they wanted, and they took Quinion over, you know, Terrian. Um, but you know, the Eagles addressed a lot of needs of free agency. Ike, they didn't take any corners. Yeah, they did that in the draft. And typically, if you want top flight corners in this business, you have to spend your first round pick to get them. Baldy, you mentioned Jalex Hunt and Houston Chris, and coming from Houston Christian. Of course, Quinion Mitchell was from Toledo. I, I'm 
really curious about the challenge for a team of even if you get all the tape, scouting a player who's uh, not just opposition but teammates are at such a remarkable different level. Even big-time college football is a remarkable different level from the NFL. But talking about someone who played at Houston Christian or Toledo, I, how does a team go about figuring out whether a player who played at comp, played against competition like that can play at the next level? That's a great question, Spike. And honestly, um, what I look for first, and I think what most teams look for, do they dominate the level of competition? And you can you know, pretty clearly say, that uh, that's what Quinion did, uh, you know, and I think Jalen Hunt has all of the attributes to be a really good player. But I do think it's going to be a little bit of a jump for Jalen. I, I, you know, he he hadn't seen anybody that looks like Jordan Malata or Lane Johnson in his life. He's never seen those people. So I mean, that, and that's what you're up against. So Nolan Smith found out out last year when you know he wasn't very effective. So they're taking. Look, they're taking a, a talented player that has the measurables you're looking for to be successful. But, the, you know, it's it's a real projection there. I think Quinion, you know, has a chance to step in and play. I mean, his his uh, ability to break on a ball, his ability to really, um, you know, just play the ball in the air and, and run with receivers. I mean, I, I think he's going to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, you could say to your question, Spike, look, Terry and Arnold was coached by Nick Saban. He's coached 10 corners that are starting in this league. He coaches the defensive backs. I would tend to lean a little bit towards Arnold just because of the culture and the coach over whatever talent I saw with Mitchell at Toledo. Mm-hmm. When you look at Jeremiah Jr. being being drafted late, Baldy, um, just um, a quick, I guess, synopsis on what you think of him as a player. He obviously went later than some people expected him to. Where it's some of the areas you think he needs to get better at. And, and, and how do you see him sort of fitting uh, in this defense as an uh, inside linebacker? Well, look, I mean, at a very uh, prominent, you know, football factory at Clemson, I mean, he, was a, he filled up the stat page, you know, in his two years there. I mean, you know, he's, he's very, very quick to read and to react. But, you know, look, he's not going to ever be the size of his father. He's never going to be the size and have the power and the strength. His dad could just dominate the A-gap. I don't see – he doesn't play like that. That's not a style. He's an undersized will linebacker, and he can do a lot of things. He's a good blitzer. He gets through the, the soup and, you know, the eggshells and the coffee grain. He gets through all that stuff in the garbage. He, gets, he, he slides through it pretty good. And, um, you know, he stays on his feet, and he's a playmaker. So the question now is, um, you know, can he become a three-down linebacker? Well, you, you know, you've got to do, you know, you got, you know, when you get into certain coverages, you know I can be a linebacker. I mean, there's going to be times where you got to cover the tight end or you got to cover the back. Yep. And if you can't do those things, because we saw it last year, week in and week out, they had guys that could not do that. And so guys like Christian McCaffrey in this league torched them. So that's going to be the challenge. I mean, he's going to get a warm reception. He's going to get, I think, a long leash here. But, you know, can he cover elite tight ends and running backs in this business? Because at times, you're going to, you're going to have to be able to do that. We're talking to Odyssey NFL insider Brian Baldinger. Baldy, I, this is you know deeper in the draft, so you can tell me if you don't have anything on them. But we were expecting, and Howie Roseman said he was expecting to take an offensive lineman higher up in the draft. Didn't really break out that way. They wind up with uh, Trevor Keegan and Dylan McMahon, both guys that look look interesting. I you know curious you know whether you've watched their tape and what you think of those guys. Well, I mean, Trevor Kagan, I mean, you can't help but notice him. I mean, the offensive line was the story of Michigan. I mean, the way they ran the ball, controlled the line of scrimmage uh, over the last three years, and he was right there. I mean, you know, he's got good size. Uh, you know, you give him the stout, and I think you're going to get yourself a guard, you know. Uh, and at some point, you just can't keep paying guards the way they just paid Landon Dickerson. You know, at some point, you got to develop some guys. And I think, I think Trevor Kagan has everything it takes to become – you know, a, a, a swing guard. I don't expect him. Like, I mean, he might even win the job this year. Like, I don't know what Tyler Steen is going to do or how he's going to play, but I, I, I think he'll be in the mix. I mean, all those guys that have been drafted from John Runyon, I mean, all the guys at Michigan get drafted, they end up playing. And, you know, they tend to be pretty well-schooled and have seen, you know, you go against Ohio State, Michael Hall Jr., and the guys you're going up against, you're going against really good talent, you know, week in, week out. And he certainly looks like he can – you know, he's got that ability. 
Um, Baldy, when is the next, before we let you go, I'm, I'm going to get in on every time you call in, I want to check in. When is the next vacation and where is it? Is it, is it Bali? Is that what you said you had next? Well, I mean, here's the deal, Spike. Like sometimes you just do stupid things in your life. Yeah. Right? So I, uh, recently tore my tricep. Oh no. So it's not healing. It's, it's, it's rolled up like a ball. It looks ugly Ooh. and it got no strength in it. So tomorrow morning at 10 30, I'm getting it reattached. So, Oh. You know, it's hard to go to Bali if, with your girlfriend if you're in a cast from your shoulder to your hand. Like, it's just, it's just not advised. So, oh. like, I got to suck it up here during vacation season, and, uh, you know, I kind of push this stuff back a little bit right now. Oh, man. That man. is a bummer. I mean, no one's more bummed than you, yeah. obviously, but but heal yeah. up, man. I, we're yeah, exactly. wishing you the best. Yeah, I got to, you know, I got to act like I'm 25 again and get this thing healed in a couple weeks. Yeah, a couple weeks. <laughs> He's torn tricep. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't see me again for the rest of 2024, Baldy. <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, well, good All luck right, with fine. surgery and yep. heal up. All, All right, right Baldy. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. All good right, luck. that was Bye. that was Odyssey NFL insider Brian Baldinger. Make sure to follow the best football show with Brian Baldinger on the Odyssey app or subscribe wherever you get your podcast.